good morning welcome back to the online classes after a short interval we were learning about ancient indian history in the previous lessons now we are going to deal with the medieval indian history so the first lesson is lesson 7 that is medieval india the cholas medieval india the cholas we have already learned about cholas in the sangam period but the sangam cholas and the medieval cholas are different by the 9th century not 8th century by the 8th century a new dynasty developed in south india in south india the people developed their own culture and language and these people are called dravidians these dravidians formed mainly three dynasties in south india they were the the cheras the cholas and the pandyas of which the cholas were the most powerful and the most dominant one so we are going to learn about the cholas in this lesson cholas various sources are giving information about the chola rule and chola dynasty but we have to learn about two of the archaeological sources only literary sources are also available but we have to learn only two of the archaeological sources they are inscriptions and the second one is the bragadeshwara temple so the first uh, a source that is inscription so many inscriptions are available to know about the chola history these inscriptions can be broadly divided into three they are first one copper plate grants copper plate grants another inscription inscriptions on pillars and walls of temples so the three categories of inscriptions first one is a copper plate grants these uh, inscriptions are mostly made from copper or copper surfaces copper plates okay they are called copper plate grants second one stone inscriptions the inscriptions made on stone they are stone inscriptions and the third one is uh, inscriptions on pillars and walls of temples inscriptions on pillars inscriptions on pillars and the walls of temples these are the three uh, different varieties of or three categories of inscriptions and two of the copper plate grants named the anvil and the karandi and one stone inscription named the kanyakumari stone inscription give us lot of information about 
many of the south india boreas and the origin of the chola dynasty okay the three important inscriptions they are anbil another one karandi these are two proper right grants and another one kanyagoma stock inscription kanyagomari stone inscription this is stone inscription then two copper plate grant that is anbil and karandi these three inscriptions give us a lot of information about the origin of the cholas and the many gives information about many of the uh, rulers many of the ancient rulers all most of these inscriptions not most all these these inscriptions were made either in tamil or in sanskrit language these inscriptions are either in tamil or in sanskrit language mostly they used the tamil language for this inscription but some of some of the inscriptions are in sanskrit also and uh, what do what what information these inscriptions give us how are these inscriptions helpful to us us students history students how these inscriptions are helping us in knowing the uh, south indian history or knowing about the tolls let's see uh, how these uh, inscriptions are helpful to us these inscriptions display various uh, factors are related with the tolls first of all they give information about the administration they give information about the administration then taxation administration taxation revenue system etc of the charles secondly they gave information about about the uh, gifts and endowments to temples and brahmins they inform us about the gifts and endowments gifts and endowments endowments to whom to temples people gave people and always gave um, gifts and endowments or donations contributions to uh, temples and brahmins this uh, so at the time of the cholas the other one of temples were built and these temples were built due to the uh, donations and contributions or liberal uh, contribution and help of the rulers as well as the people again the inscriptions give us information or they tell us about the construction of temples
construction of temples. Construction of temples, asubas, uh, the setting up of deities. Construction of temples as well as setting up of deities in these temples. Then again, these inscriptions are some of these inscriptions are. They are uh, royal proclamations, whereas some other uh, inscriptions are uh, resolutions passed by the, the village administrative bodies or the village assemblies, whereas some other inscriptions are about judgments against uh, various offenses. And crimes. Some inscriptions on the temples, means the temple walls and the pillars of the uh, temple, they serve as public utility. That means some of the inscriptions made on walls and temples, usually people are coming to the temple, garden floor people are coming to the temple. Temple is a meeting place for a uh, place of public gathering. That's why many of the inscriptions made on the temple walls and the pillars were mainly dealing with the, the records related with the registrations, public registrations like uh, uh, registration of buying and selling of certain uh, piece of land, what else are the to be from, uh, followed, uh, then mortgages, like these things, what else rules are to be followed, like these things are informed uh, to the public through these inscriptions. So certain uh, inscriptions on the temple walls and the pillars serve as public utility or uh, to create awareness among the uh, people. So the uh, inscriptions, uh, inscri inscriptions give a lot of information about the Chola Raya and these inscriptions were how these inscriptions are useful to us the same way the inscriptions were useful to the public during that time also in order to carry on their uh, daily um, daily activities in order to carry their daily activity that means when they uh, deal with certain uh, matters like uh, as I told uh, by the selling of plants okay then uh, regarding birth or death okay so like these uh, issues are there, what, what type of rules they should follow, okay, what system they should follow, that is uh, given in this. That rules were given on the walls and the pillars of the temples through inscriptions. Uh, then the next one, uh, the second uh, source, archaeology source that is the Brandeisra temple. Bhagadeshara Temple. Bhagadeshara Temple is also known as Raja Rajeshara Temple. It is called Raja Rajeshara Temple because the temple was built by Raja Raja first. Raja Raja first built the temple in Tanjavur. And since it was built by Raja Raja, Raja, Raja first, Raja Raja first is one of the most powerful rulers of the Chola dynasty. And since it was built by Raja Raja, 
This temple was slain there after the reign of Darmoda. Thus it was uh, known as Raja Rajeshwar Temple as well. This Raja Rajeshwar Temple or Pradeshwar Temple is also another uh, source of information. It gives, it is one of the most or the best specimen of a temple architecture of the South Indians. It is the best example for temple architecture of the South Indian style. The South Indian style of temple architecture is called the Dravidian style. When we were learning about the Gupta period, we learned the temple architecture. The Guptas, or the during the time of Guptas, they built a temple at Devagar, that is called the Shavdara temple. And what was the style uh, used for constructing this temple? That is called the Nagara style. The temples built in North India were built in a uh, different style, that is called Nagara style, whereas the temples built in South India, that is also in a different style, and that style is called the Dravidi style. And the uh, Brihadeshwar temple is the best example for the Dravidian style of temple architecture. Some of the important features of the Dravidian style of temple architecture. One is a Gobra. Gobra is one of the uh, features of the Dravidian style of architecture. Gobra is a gateway to the temple. In front of the temple, a massive gateway was built by the Cholas. And this uh, gateway had uh, uh, so many sculptures as well. And this type of gateway, massive gateways are called uh, Gobra. And another one is a uh, Mandapa. Mandapa is another the Dravidian style of uh, architecture. Mandapa, there is an audience hall. This uh, Chola temple square having an audience uh, hall attached with it. That is uh, called uh, Mandapa. This is a prayer hall. The people it, um, who are coming to the temple for prayer and worship, uh, they, for their uh, facility, a prayer hall was built, uh, a pillared hall was built, that is called the mandapa. So this is an audience hall or a prayer hall. And this mandapa, after uh, coming to the temple through the gopuram, uh, through the gopuram, one enters the mandapa, and through uh, from the mandapa, one is moving directly towards the gopuram, the third feature of the Dravidian style of architecture, that is the gopuram. This mandapa led to a Garbhagraha that means the main uh, deity room, the shrine or the main deity room where the, the image of God or Goddess was kept there, that is called the Garbhagraha. And one more feature is there, that is called the uh, Vimana. Vimana, the fourth feature, that is Vimana. Vimana, that is a, a tall uh, structure or tall tower built above the temple is called a vimana. Uh, the southern temples are very high vimanas, having uh, with a uh, large number of works in sculpture and uh, architecture works where they are, architecture designs where they are. So, this type of uh, construction is called a vimana. And the uh, Brigadeshwar temple. I told the Pradesh temple is the best example for the Dravidian state of architecture. And it is said that its vimana had the height of 190 feet. The vimana of the Pradesh temple was built at a height of 190 feet. It had a one height, uh, 190 feet high uh, vimana. And it had a uh, large number of decorative. Uh, works on this Vimana, uh, sculptures were there and the so many other architectural designs were there 
and another feature of this Vimana of the Pramesha Temple was at the top of the Vimana, a dome shaped structure was there. The Pramesha Temple had a dome shaped structure at the top of the Vimana, and this dome shaped structure was built of a single block of stone which is having 25 feet height and uh, uh, 80 tons weight. So such a very big single block of uh, stone was kept at the top of the Vimana of the Bhargaisa Temple. So these are the four main features of the Dravidian style of architecture or the architectural uh, style of the South Indian temples. Gopuram, that is a gateway, Mandava, that is an audience hall, Garbhagha, the place or the room where the, the image or the, uh, the, di the deity was kept, the image of God or Goddess, that is called the deity, the deity was kept and the last one is Vimana. And some other features of the South Indian temples, sorry, no South Indian temples, some other features of the Pradesh temple. These are the general features of the South Indian temples, but some uh, features, special features of the Pradesh uh, temple are uh, a Nandi pavilion. It had a pavilion named the Nandi, and Nandi pavilion was one of the features of the Pradesh temple. Another one is a, a very huge Shivalingam was there in the uh, what is called the Pradesh temple. That is 8.87 meter high Shivalingam was there. A gigantic Shivalingam, okay. And 8.87 meters high shooting. This is a single above cut deity that is in the uh, a single rocket uh, deity. Shivalingam was kept in the temple that is having a height of 8.87 meters. Another one is a pillar one top. Pillar four top. A pillar one top that is another feature of the Brunesha uh, temple. And one more feature is there, uh, a large courtyard, a very big courtyard. We got it, a uh, big courtyard. This is also another feature of the Brother's Temple. So, these are some of the special features of the Brother's Temple. Okay, uh, that's all about the sources of uh, Chola period. Uh, the sources which give information about the Chola Pikachu. Okay, once again, the special features of the Pradeshara Temple. One, uh, the Nandi Pavilion. Second, are 8.87 meters high Shivalingam. Third, Pillar Portico. Fourth one, fourth one is not popular. An assembly hall. Okay, fourth one is an assembly hall, a large assembly hall. A large assembly hall. These are the four special features of the Bharatiya Temple at Tanjore. Okay, that's all about the sources, inscriptions, and the Bharatiya Temple are two important sources. Are so that's all about uh, today's class. And next time we will learn about the the main rulers of the Chola dynasty and their administration. Okay, we will read the and learn it. Thank you.